I'm not sure what way this video is going to go. It's not going to be a full teardown, but this is a retired self-scan checkout thing as used in supermarkets. And I found it on eBay, I think it was Frost Giant who recommended that I take a look at the listing and thought it's cheap, it'd be fun to take a look at, and it turns out it is an MC18 mobile computer, but it's got very, very locked down software. So at the moment it's booting up, and after a while, I mean it takes quite a while to boot up, I've already instantly, I've already opened the battery. The battery does not open very easily. The battery was completely dead and locked out when I got it, but I've kind of I've got some probing done, and I'll show you what that is. So the unit is currently booting up. Let me find a conveniently barcode object to scan. There's, there's an object with a barcode. Takes a while to boot up. Uh, VMware EarWatch. Not sure there's agent connection field. You can at this point, you can actually touch things and go into various menus and close things down. Don't know if you're supposed to close things down. I've closed that thing down. What if I hold my finger on the button here, the power button? It does offer power off reboot. Oh, it's got reboot. And I've got a little button in the back here. Let's go reboot. And it's supposedly rebooting, but it may be doing other stuff behind the scenes. This could drag because it does take a while to do its things. I'm holding a button in. I'll show you what that button is later on. It's something I added in the back. But so far, I've not had any joy. This is where it may or may not give me joy. This is where maybe I should pause. It is rebooting. Is it going to do what I'm hoping it's going to do and go into a menu? I don't think it is. I think it's just literally rebooting. Right. Okay, so tell you what, I'm just going to pause while it reboots. One moment, please. Okay, it's back to Agent Connection Failed, and gives you the option. I should press more buttons. I've been pressing buttons before. I, that, that is just going to be a delay. So now it comes up with its main menu. Your IT admin has restricted access. Yes, they have. Is it going to scan things? Yes. So it's putting out its scanning now. It's got a little orange dot in the middle. You can see the pulsating dot in the middle of my hand there. Maybe not. It's this sort of target, and it's just literally, it's an LED up here. And there's a light source and then a camera. And as long as you get within about half a metre, that's about 18 inches, of a barcode, it will scan it. But if you go too far, it will light it, but not... Oh, it is getting a decent range. Oh, it's getting a better range than it was before. So, yeah, it is roughly about half a metre to three quarters of a meter uh, and you can scan code you can keep scanning but after a while it's just going to take the hump and then it's just going to not scan anything anymore i hope that's not definitely allowed it probably is uh, but anyway let's explore this further uh, just in case that was super loud i'm just going to check that one moment please I have checked that wasn't too beep although if you were looking for a relaxing video at night time it may have been quite noisy uh, the unit has gone into its scan and go uh, sleep mode. When you wake it up, its barcode has decided to be turned off, probably because I've scanned lots of things and the buffer's full and it can't really do much. I was kind of hoping it was going to overflow the buffer and cause an error. It didn't. Uh, I shall disconnect it now. So to power this up, I connected a couple of wires onto the back terminals here because I don't have the charging base for it, owing to the fact that it would be quite expensive. And also, this isn't necessarily taking a charge from this unit. There's reasons for that. This little button here is uh, just tacked across the two middle terminals because there is a little uh, probe you can get that when you press and hold the reboot button here and you put your uh, probe in that shunts these terminals at the back and I just put the switch across for convenience it can theoretically on non-lockdown devices it can uh, kind of recover into a sort of like a, the uh, recovery mode and let you do things but that's not happening um, right so Let's take it apart further. No, let's take a look at the battery first. So the battery was completely dead when I got it. It was ultrasonically welded shut. It did not want to open. It was really destructive opening it. That may have caused a bit of damage to the circuit board. But having said that, after I'd opened it, I was there was some foam and I was picking the foam off and just surface mount components came off. And I thought, okay, I'll just clean it with a, a toothbrush and some isopropyl alcohol instead. And as I scrubbed it, other components came off and disappeared. Uh, so I'm not sure if there was a soldering issue. It was just maybe just me being excessively violent with this thing. But um, stuff was coming off it. 
It may have been the violence of opening it. However, things worth noting. Here's a picture of the remnants of my destruction. We have what looks like a set of MOSFETs for the protection. Not sure what these little chips are. And this one, I'm not even sure is there supposed to be another part of that. Is that just the base? Have I literally ripped the top of a chip off or something like that? But um, I don't know if there was a chip in there uh, with bond wires. Uh, but anyway, it looks a bit odd. Not sure what that is or was. Um, and I haven't really explored this in too much detail because there's literally no point. Not unless I was going to buy another one and then try and reverse engineer it. However... There are six wires. There's two black and two red. They're just common together for power as far as I can see. And then we get the green and the white for communication, which also probably, I wonder if they connect to the back port, if that's done entirely in the unit, probably in, in the unit. However, if you wanted to recover this one of these batteries without opening it, which is the best option, measure in from the ends between, I'd say, five millimetre, which is just under a quarter of an inch, dead centre here, and drill a tiny hole downwards from the top of the case, noting that hopefully the others aren't different. Uh, what model is this? The battery is part number bt 0008 a one um, But certainly for this one, if you measured in from both ends, dead centre, five millimetres and drilled a small hole, you'd go onto the hard pad that is uh, soldered onto the circuit board and then spot welded onto. And that would let you probe in and possibly nudge it back up to uh, three volts. And then once it was above three volts, hopefully it would unlock, unless it's got permanent locking on board. I don't know, because uh, the unit is not sending data. It's probably because this was a chip and it's dead. It's gone now. And, and it's just not uh, sending a charge up. But once you've charged it, it will power the unit. Anyway... Let's go a bit deeper into here. I've not been in here yet. I'm intrigued to see what is inside. So we'll take these screws out. I'm guessing part of the reason it's locked down is because they don't really want people just helping themselves to handy, little expensive handheld computers out of the supermarket. Although apparently they do lock into the cradle. I've never used this system. I'm fine using the self-scan, but I've never really used this. It seems almost old-fashioned in a way. Do they, will they still use them at the co-op? Not the co-op, but the Asda in Glasgow, when I'm back there. What is this going to reveal? Is there anything under here? It's a little rubber thing. No. Is this going to come off? I think it's going to come off. Ooh. Is there something else I should know about here? I don't know. Oh, unless there's something under under here, perhaps. Give it a hard rub and see if any screw holes appear. If it doesn't come off, I shall re-explore that area. I think it is coming off, though. This is where I break it horribly. Uh, this isn't really want to come off. It's almost as if there's something hidden. Oh, this here is probably quite important. Uh, let me just grab the screwdriver set. Sneaky little extra screw of a different size from the others. The vermins. Is it this one? Yes, good shot. So they seem to have quite a lot of these on eBay, but then again, I'm guessing if they were pulling all the units out of stores, then that's what they would have quite a lot. Is it worth pulling this bit out? I think it is, and then we'll just whip the whole darn lot out through here. Oh, there is this speaker in here as well, which can unplug, like a little Lego. Uh, maybe it'll unplug, or maybe I'll just break it. Hold on, let me see if I've got a flat blade to just ease this out. And then we'll just really explore the circuit board to see what we can find. <laughs> that's that's a disconnected. It wasn't really the way I expect to come off the speaker. But this is what we have. Okay, we have more screws. And this is where I should be doing the jerry-rig everything and being a bit more careful in how I take it apart. But I'm not too bothered. I think the company's selling these. They're fairly cheap. They're about £10 all-inclusive. I think they're just testing the market because they want to see if the hackers manage to unlock it and it becomes a useful little personal Android-based computer. 
Is this an antenna beside? What is that? I'm not sure. Or a communication port. More screws. Just like a proper Android phone should have lots of screws. Oh, there's the uh, there is the assembly for the uh, barcode scanning. That's quite interesting. The person who designed this will probably be screaming because uh, I'm taking it apart in the wrong order, or very destructively. Hmm, which is probably true. I think I may have to release the screws in the scanner. This is where it's so easy to break ribbon cables. I'll try not to. That'd be a shame but did. Oh, that's better. But it is not coming off the housing here, so I'm going to have to unplug. I'm going to have to unplug other things first. Then I'm going to have to unplug this. Bit of sticky tape. Is that going to fold up at the back? Is it going to click up? Or is it going to be the one that... Every single one of these is different. Uh, either you push them back the way or you flip them up. What's it going to be? There's always that thing that you open things up and it's very easy to break them. I'm just going to take a closer look at that. Maybe it just pulls out. It might just pull out with a tab. Hold on. Let me grab a pair of tweezers. Ceramic tweezers. Is that going to pull out? Or am I going to have to lift a little flap up? Oh, a little flap lifted up. That's great. We've got that out now. And that is most likely going to the screen, I'll guess. That is not coming out. Mm. This is frustrating. What about this? I think this is one that will lift up, he said, using his ceramic tweezers to prise it up, which is not what you do. That is the little barcode scannery thing there. Mm, very neat. I get the feeling that I don't know if it's an LED source for the, or a sort of like a scattered laser source. I think it is a scattered laser. Uh, what about this now? Take off that little tab there. Pop this up. Or is this going to pull back or is it going to be nice if they used all different connectors so yeah that's the one that pulls forward I think I just pulled it straight out that's okay is this going to come out now I don't want to damage it I mean it doesn't really matter it's come out is that us more or less clear of this now no there's one more and it's this this one here I shall carefully push that forward. I think it's the one that pushes forward. I won't use excessive force this time. You'll all have terrible memories of the first time you opened one of your phones and uh, all the little ribbon cables burst because you didn't know how to take them off. There is an art to it. That is more or less it. Do we go further? We do go further. I've got some screws here. He's doing anything. Or is this just a... Is that a screw? Or is it just a... I don't think it is. I don't see any other screws. This is where you might have to take the front face off to gain access to stuff. But at this point in time, all I think that's in here is the LCD display. So I don't know if it's really worth going in here. The LCD display and the backlights... No, I don't think this is going to come off without breaking stuff. Oh, you know what? I think it's held in by clips at the side. Yes, it is. Lots of opportunity to break things here. Yeah, particularly when you're prizing about, about against the LCD display, that doesn't feel good. I get the feeling right. It's just the LCD display behind here. We won't go any further. Let's take a look at what's on here. Very bare bones. It's not a powerful Android system, is it? It doesn't seem to have the pizzazz of modern stuff. What chips do we have? We have an LPDA 8B164B4PR. Okay. We have a 
1-7-1-8-9-A-E-T-H-G-B-M-H-G-G-C-1-L B-A-I-L That rolls off the tongue Taiwan I look for things This looks like a te- Texas Instruments chip here Could that be a memory chip? 6030-B-107-77-C-209-L And what about this? I'm looking for something I recognise. ACTEL, ACTEL, AGLN020. Okay. Um, none the wiser. I was kind of hoping. There's another text instrument chip. I was kind of hoping that this would just contain standard, the media text stuff, but it's not. And there's a little AT17158X Mega 16. What about the charging circuit? Oh, there's a button. That is that is the click button in the front. Oh, that's disappointing. I thought I'd found another button. A little screening, gold screening contacts were touching onto the back of the panel. Really, there's not too much we can actually do here. How far can I go? It is just a crude exploration. Uh, but anyway, interesting enough Thing As I say, I'm not going to go into full reverse engineer of this because that would be pointless. I think if you looked up those chips, you'd find the manufacturer's data sheet. That looks a bit... Oh, it's not crusty. It's actually got some sort of resin around it to actually make it water resilient. Is that an RF circuit? Talking which, where are the antennas? There's the antennas here, probably. This is probably the antenna. Isn't that ridiculous? It's the science of antennas and the little metal can next to it. Not a lot on this side other than just the that little can. Really not too much, a few connectors and components. But there we have it. I'm not going to go into it too deeply because there is no point. I can't really reverse engineer it too much. I can just basically show how it comes apart and uh, perhaps people are having a go at reverse engineering this and there is a way to basically reflash it on the PCB to actually get it to turn into a, a generic handheld Barcode scanning computer. I'm not sure there'd be many uses for that. I think a lot of people would buy this just the novelty of basically hacking and getting out into it and getting a new operating system and playing Doom in it and things like that as they do. But that is it. That's what's inside the Zebra MC18, I think it was, the little computer. It's very minimalist. It's actually less than I was expecting. But that is the power of modern Android devices. <laughs>